Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm having another play with my Stitch of the Seasons, Summer, and you'll be very, very pleased with me. I, not only did I get all those threads that were in a hang of a mess, the Steph Francis threads, but I've wound them onto a little bobbin. So they're, they're organized. It was just, yeah, one of those little jobs. And I haven't undone this one because I, I'm still hoarding it. So that's that's what's happening with those Steph Francis threads. So what did I do? Well, oh, I had a big, big effort put in and I have seed stitched a lot. So let me bring it up to the camera. You'll notice the seed stitching down here. I'll get to those little leaves there because I've, I've solved a little issue that I was having. So I've seed stitched through there, all around the flowers, through the flowers. I've drifted down here through this orange zone, across to the side boundary. I then started seed stitching through the rows. So when I start to stitch that rose, the seed stitch is in place. I then started following that side boundary up. There's some more leaves that I'll show you in a moment. And across the top, to the purple flowers, drifted through those, slowly brought my way down around Little Bird and down the side of the Blue Jay. And then that was it. <clears throat> that took one day. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. My shoulder was starting to ache by the end of the evening. It was just one of those, I just sat and stitched and stitched and stitched and it was so good. And it gave me a moment to have a think about these watercolour, very pale branches. And that's what I want to show you my solution. So at the top here, I've stitched around them. You can see that the green is still showing. And then using the same thread, I decided I needed to keep it simple. I was thinking about all of these elements that I could add to the piece. And I just felt like it was going to compete with the piece. So I ended up just outlining them with a simple split back stitch. So that's a, a, a back stitch that you then go back into the actual thread. That gives you a nice continuous line. And then I just did a fly stitch down the center of the leaves. So I thought I better come back and show you what I did. And I think it was a lovely, well, I think it is a lovely solution for a very washed out image that I still want to keep washed out. That was probably my biggest thing. How do I do something without bringing it forward? Because the artist wants it in the background and I love it in the background. So that's sort of how it came to be. There's a mozzie in here, no way, go away. Oh, gosh, I hate mozzies. Let me just get this started. Then I'm going to zoom the camera in so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So just for the sake of speeding things up, I have seed stitched in around them. I can see a bit of a gap here that I've missed. So now I'm just going back and outlining first the actual leaf. So I'm stitching forward with my needle and going back through the thread of the previous stitch. And that just helps give it that continuous line. So I'm gonna whip around this. Then I've got sitting beside me all of my trims because I feel it's time to select my trims I also found my little poem that I wrote, my three sentence statement poem. I wrote it when I did the spring. So I've got that to find a home for. And I thought I, I need to make some decisions on the borders. So I'm going to do that today. I'll show you this leaf. So if you've got a piece of fabric that has a plain background and you may want to add a bit of a detail, this is a, 
a suggestion that might might suit your piece. So if you're doing a winter one and you've gone for a bit of a snowflake poinsettia, you could do a shadowy stitched feature in your background like a snowflake or something. That would just be beautiful. I can hear my phone buzzing. Why would my phone buzzing at this hour of the morning? I'm just working my way back up the side here and then each stitch coming back into the previous stitch. Okay. I like this. It's not competing with everything else. There's a lot going on in this piece. Love the seed stitch. Oh, nothing like seed stitch. I know you must think the girl is crazy, but if you've got some time, have a try of some because I think you'll be surprised of what it does for your work. <clears throat> so now I'm going to start the center, which is the fly stitch. So I'm just Getting myself ready in position. That one will tuck under the little bird and then bring it up at the bottom of that previous stitch and lock it down. It's that simple. Very quick, very effective. I'm still thinking about doing this stitch down the center of my three-dimensional green leaves that I did in the last video, but I just can't decide. I'll just leave it for now. If I can't decide and I don't love it, well, then maybe there's a problem and I should just move on with the thought. I know you can unpick it and it's not a big thing, but I'm a bit of a boots and all girl, so if I have the thought and it sort of tickles my fancy, I just go for it. Follow your instincts. I'm not sure what I'm doing with the splotches of paint yet. At the moment, I've seed stitched around them all. Something will... Do I do one big stitch to finish that? I think I might just finish that off. There we go. So now I'm just going to do a few little seed stitches in that little spot there while I see it. I've got a little bit of thread left. Probably not enough to fill it. We'll see. So that's how I'm going to treat the washed out leaves in this piece. So I'll be able to stitch all of that zone in with that. It nearly looks skeletal, those leaves that you can see the veins within them. I really, really like it. I like how there's a bit of air in this piece compared to the last one. It was so dense and heavily, heavily um, stitched. Well, this is too, but it's a more of a subtle. It's good because it's giving the eye a bit of a break. And I want the pieces to look different. So each season you've got a new something to put up on your wall. And it's different to the previous season and there's a lot happening. Okay, just enough to just catch that little spot. Alrighty. So I would say I'm three quarters seed stitched which is fantastic if you ask me. All right, now I'm just going to zoom up. Out we come. And I'm just gonna make a little bit of space. I've got, I'll put my needle in here. I don't wanna lose it, it's my favorite. 
here is here is spring so what I want to do is focus on this zone here and I've got my bucket of trims and I'm hoping there's something in here that can go across the top and down this side to connect the pieces I really like that but that's flowers and too short I need something fairly long actually I don't think any of these little snippety bits of trim are going to be any good actually so I need to dig deeper unless I patchwork something together. Mm. You know what the challenge is going to be making that blend with that because they're so different. But that's not a challenge. That's okay. Let's have a look. These are some that I bought online where I got a yard. So I think this is where I need to actually meander. I did do a video showing showing those of where I got them. I just can't remember the details now. I'll try and find that and link it below. So if there was something that caught your eye. Oh, look at that. Like how big do we want this piece? We don't want it that big. Let's get rid of all the big ones. No. Right. No. No. I think we need solid too short. We need solid fabrics. Otherwise I'm going to have to put something just as I say that I pull out one that is see-through. Can put fabric behind it. No. I'm running out of options. So I've got to put some pearls in. What a challenge it is to marry two different color schemes. If that's stitched onto the top, then the beads go, or the buttons go there and that connects it. It's a possibility, but it's just not, not doing it for me. See, some of these will be beautiful for autumn. They're so big, but I sort of feel like I need something. All right, down to the little guys, <clears throat> plus scrappy bits. bit boring isn't it sort of that's not bad at least it's got a bit of punch in the background to match blue jay and the colors below but still tones with the colors above I don't mind that I guess I've got then a couple others that probably will work with will work with the other pieces of fabric coming, like the reds and creams and into the, the blues. So maybe this is a possibility. Let's have a look and a closer look. Okay, so there's a little piece of fabric folded in there. Well, that would be handy. So if that got stitched onto there, and then that got stitched onto there. So that would be the top to my piece. So with that gone, and we're just looking at the bird piece, I don't mind that, guys. It certainly holds its own, doesn't it? I think that might be the piece I put there. And then the little pearl beads. I'm going to do it. I've made a decision. So I'm just going to pin 
you saw them. The other reason I wanted this sort of nutted out is I'm working on, you know, my flowers and I sort of want the piece to know where my boundaries are. So I will <clears throat> just slip stitch that into position. Okay, so scissors. What did I do with my scissors? There we are. Oh, that worked out reasonably well there. If I cut back from that flower. Well, that's the top sorted. And then I've got the three little pearls, the buttons that I use to connect it. Some threads there. So I can sneak those three little buttons into position now. And as the seasons are all through the year, those little loops will catch the buttons and it should hang nicely on my wall. So that's the, the plan. That's good. All right. So let's just have a little tidy up here. Now, I'm actually, I'm wondering, I'm going to do something down this side. Maybe I could use one of these see-through ones. Got a couple. Some of those colours are a bit ordinary, might I just say. Not so nice. That one there, I think, has got potential. I would need something behind it. Gee, this piece has got very blingy. It's so different to the previous. Which was a soft. Let's put those away before the girl loses them. Okay, so let's get that up. What have we got here? No. Like it works. Need some fabric behind it. Actually not bad. It is growing on me the more I look at it. This one here. She's an odd little combination, isn't she? No, it's lost, isn't it? Isn't that funny? The piece actually gobbles that up. It's not holding its own. No. And then this guy. This was my instinct when I was glancing across at the pile of the pile of the pieces, but yuck. Ugh. <laughs> nope. I apologize to anyone who thought, oh, that's pretty. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's not. That just doesn't work. But this one I think does. It's holding its own. It's picking up on these pinks and the blues. But it needs something behind it. What could I use? Where's my scraps of fabric? Just to get a bit of an idea of some textures that could go in behind. Other than that, I look at a lace. Maybe I've got enough bling and I need to bring. So this is just a piece of calico. Goodness, it's about the right size too. So the calico comes down. as well I'm just pinning it to the top of my piece let me just show you what I'm doing I've just lifted that I'll probably just to help reinforce my piece put a piece of calico up there the more layers the better the stronger it will hang so I think I'll stitch that on I like the furriness peeking through 
homespun if you're in the States. We call it calico here. Let me just flip that over. I feel like I need to reinforce there. And there was a second piece. But she was stitching buttons into it. The buttons are going to pull and tug on the piece. So we might just put that there. And I'll just do an invisible stitch just to link it all together. That'll help reinforce the back there a little bit. There we go. Now I feel like we're getting a bit of law and order here. And stitch all that down. So flip it back over. Now remembering we can't go any, okay, let's slow down girl. Let's just trim that back a little bit. You can trim that up once it's stitched. We'll let, let it have a bit of flex in case my hand is a bit tight in stitching it. At least I've got a little excess fabric there to let it come into line. Let's have a look at you now without... Gonna tuck that under. So it's the right size. I think it's going to be the one. Okay. Oh yeah. Gee, does that not scream summer? Bright, happy. Just getting my pins. So I'll leave that little furry edge showing there on that inside. Just creates that little bit of texture. I'm going to trim that off. Pop it away. Some of these I've purchased, I, you know, when you're looking at websites, you think, oh, I think that'll be handy. I'll, I'll grab it anyway. And when you get them, you think, gosh, when am I ever going to use that? I tell you, it surprises me, but colour, sometimes the right piece pops out and you think, gosh, there you go. That piece was, was the one. I might even turn that over to have a bit of a straight edge there instead of a raggedy edge, just to make it finish. It'll help give that side a little bit more strength too. So I'm just pinning everything at the moment and I'll unpin and think about what layer gets stitched first in a moment. Someone asked me, will there be backing fabrics go onto the backs of these pieces? Quite possibly, but you know, I'm not a real big one for putting the back on pieces. I really enjoy seeing the journey that is. You know, I'm one of those people that flip it over and go, oh, I wonder how they did that. So I like seeing all this. It's, it's yeah, I don't know. It's up to you. I guess if I was putting it into a show, I'd probably put it back over it. But when it's just my own work, and sometimes I pick pieces back up and I go again and add something else. Like I might learn a new stitch and this will pop into my mind and I might start reworking some of this area that's a, what I'd call quite neutral. That often happens. Now the bottom of my piece, what am I gonna put across here? I think I've made enough decisions for one day. I sort of feel like I need to visit. Now, there you go. I said I was going to not make a decision, but off and running. I feel like I need to consider some crocheting. I want to mix it up a little bit. Let me just grab a bucket of... There's not a lot of choice in here. But... Maybe there might be something. So it needs to be quite narrow and it has to sit 
on the piece. If it goes too far out, oh yeah, oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. Look at this. The fact that that's cut to the right size, I'm sorry, it just has to go on. It just has to be. We're flipping to a whole new industry now of crocheting. It's a collage of goodies, isn't it? And I like how it's got a little drape. So that allows me to sneak the next season in under there potentially and have that peeking down on the top of the next piece. So that's it, that's in. Gosh, we're making some serious decisions here, aren't we? That's got plenty of meat to stitch into. That'll allow me to trim that back. Now the side. I don't know, I'm thinking of not actually putting anything on that side and I just do a whip stitch down here. I think I've got enough going on. I'm thinking, yeah. Sort of feel like I do have enough going on down there. Maybe a very small. No, um, no I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave it. I sort of feel like I need a, something a bit random happening there. But anyway, now um, the words. I need to have a think about those as well. So I got a scrap piece of fabric is what I need to stitch the words onto. I'm just leaning over and grabbing my neutral bucket of scraps. I'm looking for something that matches. That might be a big enough piece. Got a little flower embroidered there that someone started. The colours work, they blend, but there's a, a pop of. The reason I want to look into the words now is how much of this do I need to do because I've got these, these words coming through. What I might do is my phone, my scissors here. I'm going to find that little poem. and just write it out now i'm using using um a friction pen so if it doesn't look right i can um you know iron it out and start again so i might just come back from the edge a little bit so he goes hot Summer, some of my letters won't be quite right and I won't follow that stitch but at least it's going to give me my sizing like that went too far that are uh, hot summer days this is sheer brilliance I hope you're ready for this you're sitting down uh, here see what I mean hot summer days are here thunderstorms this is so Queensland weather that humidity through the day and then in comes a thunderstorm thunderstorms roll in I'm a bit of a weather geek so I really enjoy seeing future forecasts for the next few days and how it develops and the system that's coming and how that system affects the building up of a thunderstorm and then in comes the thunderstorm and I find it amazing how being in Brisbane for thunderstorms suburbs completely miss out yet others get the rain I, I just find that fascinating that they're so intense and small at times 
So thunderstorms roll in and here comes the final line. Like I know you are all impressed with this sheer brilliance. Refreshing rain. <laughs> that E is way too big. Refreshing rain. To cool the evenings. I really would like, where do I want that word? If I go out there, it's getting a bit long. If I come down a little bit, it's getting too wide. I'll just write it in. So yeah, being a kid from the farm, once that storm rolled through, we were often sitting outside then on the deck, enjoying the cool evening because we'd been working hard all day on the farm, or well, probably more my parents than anything. And that coolness of that evening air and that smell after rain goes through, that is summer to me. And we were always in the middle of onion season. So it was sort of, do we want to cover the bird? I don't think so. We can't be covering the bird. Yeah, I sort of, the memories of summer are very much hot summer's days, like stifling. And then in comes that thunderstorm. So it was nearly a, a show in itself. It was exciting. Not if you were getting bolts of lightning, lightning around your ears or flash flooding, I'm sure. But as a kid, all that didn't register. It was all about the feelings of the heat and then the, the pressure in the air from the um, storm. And then down it came, so the noise on that tin roof in the house. And then out comes the, the smell of soil when it's been wet. And being on a farm, we often would have a lot of cultivation around us that be fairly newly ripped. And you'd have that smell of the soil so for me, that's, I think, I think I'm going to turn it under. It just seems so big. We're purring along now, aren't we? I've got to, I've got to rework it so that my line, that the word evenings is up in here but I think that's the size I want it doesn't seem to be I'll definitely rework it it doesn't seem to be overpowering the piece now so if all that gets tucked under that's the size of my words what I might do is actually stitch that little piece down with the edges not onto my background just you know, go around and stitch it. And then that's it. That's my space. So make the words fit. So it'd be a case of getting the iron and just reworking the sentences and their location into that space. I guess I'm looking at the piece and deciding the space I have to allow for the words. And then I'll adjust my writing because I just don't want it too big. And on the previous one, I used a chocolate colored thread instead of black. So it's not as harsh. I'm going to use the same. That's good. Yeah, I like that. Now what I might do is I'm just going to mark that perimeter. So when that comes off, I know where it sits so I can carry on now stitching. So I'm just going to pull this little guy off now and I will slip stitch all of those raw edges. That's an old piece of um, doily you know when we used to embroider doilies back in the day and that's the fabric the linen that 
is to have the images printed on it. So it's good to use that scrap. There we go. That's a bit of a rough guide. That's my space. So I'll just iron this back off, push it back a little bit in size, and there's my perimeter. Even if it came in a little bit smaller after that, that I think will I think that will work. Yep. So what I might do is grab some cotton. So I've got a lot of invisible stitch to do. Like I sort of feel like it needs to go on this corner, but I don't want to lose the bird. I think we'll keep it very intense this side and a little bit more open this side just to mix it up a little bit. So I'm just going to grab my needle. And I'm going to start invisible stitching down some of these elements. I'll leave this, I think, until I press it. It's going to be too hard to get a nice edge. So I want to run that under the iron. But that lace can be stitched on. So my homework will be to attach all the perimeter elements. I might even do a stitch down this side. And then I'm going to finish all these washed leaves that are in the background with this, this stitch, the um, fly stitch. So that means that zone there can be done and those there. I've already done those ones at the top there around that iris. So plenty of homework. There we go. So it's just a catching it. Take my time to catch all those little ends. People ask occasionally um, if you're cutting crocheting, does it not fray? It doesn't seem to. Crocheting is made up of hundreds and hundreds of knots. So wherever you cut it, you can pretty much guarantee there's a knot very close by. So it just doesn't unravel. So if you're cautious and worried that cutting elements out of a crochet doily is it's just going to disintegrate, give it a go because I think you'll find it won't. But there's nothing fraying off that edge there. And then once you start adding it to your pieces, you quickly get it stitched anyway. So you're reinforcing it as well. And then the crochet before you have, has used so many knots that it's not, not going anywhere. Very, very rarely do I have crocheting that un unravels. I don't think I ever have. Even lace, sometimes you cut into lace and it's just so full of knots to create that decorative element. Gosh, I can't even keep my needle threaded today. A bit all over the place, aren't I? Oh, I love these borders. It's coming together now. Okay. I've been holding off all month to go rummaging in the borders. And then uh, last night I was thinking about making the video and I'm like, right, I've nutted out these little washed out leaves in the background. Well, that's not a very exciting video. And I didn't really feel like starting a flower. I should go and finish him. But I'm not quite, didn't feel like a flower. I felt like rummaging through the stash. So that's what we have done. We have selected our border fabrics. I like how this little bird's peeking through the top of this lace. The other thing I need to do is go rummaging through my pre-made flowers. You know all these little flowery pieces like these little guys? I got them from different um, trims and things that I've got because I'd like to 
further embellish my flowers and get some three-dimensional little clusters in amongst it, especially where things are a little bit boring. Over here near the blue jay's tail, see those little blobs of green? That's just aching for something to come down here. So stay tuned. The excitement continues. <laughs> oh my goodness. Funny the things that we get excited about in our craft room. I know you're all the same. I should probably woo, woo, woo because I'm going to reverse that out. See those leaves there? They need that treatment. So let's just back it up a bit, girl. Got a little bit ahead of yourself there. I'm going to unpick. that. Oh, that's the previous stitching. That's it there. Those I'll stitch. Those need to be that fabric. So I'm going to just drop my invisible stitch down a bit lower so I can Pop in there those little green bits of fabric. So re-thread. So I'm just going to take my needle and thread down half an inch and follow that line. And then I can always come back and re-stitch that once I get those green three-dimensional fancy leaves in there. There we go. That'll just tack it on enough. Now we're past them. I might just head back up. To that edge. probably should be doing the edging that I'm doing at the end of the project but you know how it is what's the saying you put the horse before the cart no the cart before the horse <laughs> that saying but the beauty of slow stitch is it doesn't have to be logical you can just go for it and if you want to lay something in it at another date you can it's it's all part of building up layers and stitches on layers and stitches on stitches does that make sense so that's going to tack that enough that i can remove those pins which is a very good thing so you impressed with my poem it was a good effort written straight after i wrote spring autumn Got nothing. Autumn's tricky. Like you might be thinking, oh, no, it's not because the leaves, the autumnal leaves, I'm going to put that under there, I think. The autumnal leaves, well, we don't really see that in um, Queensland. A lot of those trees that do drop those leaves aren't really planted around our area. Not like if you were going through Canada and you really see those deciduous trees through the turn of the season. We don't see that as much, unless you've sort of got a garden near you that has those style of trees. But our old gum trees and our melaleucas and, you know, the typical Aussie tree, they don't really, they're not deciduous. They definitely get new growth in spring. And you can see a flush of green come onto them. But that's probably because you've just had rain. They are the same, same all the time. So for my little poem and my memories of an autumn, it's not really the golds, the golds and the reds changing. It's more finally the heat of summer is gone 
and it's a beautiful time to get outside into the garden or go for a picnic or um, go for a swim because you're not in that baking baking sun it's there's this coolness in the air that you can you know winter's coming and like even winter's very mild in Brisbane like we're not we're no snow no blizzards it's very mild you're lucky to wear a lightweight cardigan unless you feel the cold of course but for me I'm pretty much a lightweight cardigan maybe some slippers and that's probably only about three four weeks if I go outside, the rest of the time I'm just trotting around in sandals. So winter's pretty mild. Having said that, if I was to go back to my parents' farm, it's cold because they're on the other side of the Great Dividing Range, which is um, sort of keeping the cool air from the internal part of Australia. Where I'm on the coastal side of the Great Dividing Range, which runs pretty much the length of Queensland. Um, so I'm getting that coastal fresh air from the ocean. So it just doesn't get that coldness or it doesn't keep it very long because as soon as the sun comes up and the wind picks back up, we get that coastal breeze where I live. So autumn I love the autumnal colours, but the feeling is not probably as strong autumn as you guys would be experiencing. Mozzie's back again. Oh my goodness. Welcome to summer and the mosquitoes. Horrible little creatures. I often wonder what they think when they come into a space and there's a heap of humans there. And they go, hmm, they look tasty. I'm going to have a chomp. So I'm just doing a little invisible stitch right up that side, catching all of those layers. Gosh, where's the time gone, guys? Mind you, we have achieved a fair bit. We've planned out our words. We've got our boundaries. Yeah, really good. I love the play of colour. Yep, beaut. Excellent. So remember, if you want to see who else is making a piece for Stitch the Season on YouTube, if you go to that little magnifying glass symbol and you type in hashtag, as in that little hash, hash, Stitch the Season, it will bring up all of the other YouTubers that are stitching along with me. As long as they've got that hashtag in their description, it will go directly to them and me and everyone else. So you can then binge watch all sorts of seasons being stitched. And it's been really cool because we're all on the different sides of the planet. So we're all experiencing different seasons. So it's not like we're all working on summer. We're all stitching a different season and it's been fantastic because it's sort of making me think about my next season or another completely different season so to speak you know within like I'm summer and the northern hemisphere is winter so it's making me think about um, my winter piece and what potentially I could do so it's really good so yeah if you want to have a little little bit of a look around hashtag stitch the season so whenever hashtags are in play and you hear a creator um, use one or you see it written it's a link to others with that same hashtag so I guess if you're um, 
if you don't quite write exactly the right words, um, it'll take you anywhere. It won't link you. It has to be exactly the topic or exactly the um, phrase that everyone's using. It's like um, the Roxy Journal of Stitchery. If you type that hashtag with the, the hash uh, in front, like that one there is um, hash stash busting 2024. And that's me trying to clear some space in my room with a bit of a plan of attack. So anyone else doing it, you type in hash stash busting 2024. If I had have typed um, hash stash hash busting hash 2004 that would take you to other videos that dealt with the word stash a video that was connected to busting and a video was connected to 2024 so you've got to have it typed into your search exactly that way otherwise you will not get to the rest of us doing that so it's it's nearly like a website link I think that's sort of what it is. I don't know who invents this stuff. Like, what 15-year-old thought of that and now we're all doing it? I do not know. But it's something to do with website programming. And if you do know how it is and why it is and how it works, I don't want to know. Don't tell me. It's too much for my brain. I can't take the information in. A girl's just got to have limits. <laughs> and computer tech is my limit. So now I'm just going to whip up this side while I'm yibby-yabbering to you guys and stitch this one down. There we go. So that's how hashtags work, if you were wondering. For those of you who are regulars on YouTube, you will know that. It's a really good way of finding a topic. If you typed in hashtag hot air balloons, it would drop you straight into the world of videos about hot air balloons. It's just a fantastic way of narrowing down your search because you can guarantee those creators will have put a hashtag in amongst their descriptions to drag everyone to them. Just a little invisible stitch, good old invisible stitch. I'll probably come back down through the center of that trim as well, just to make sure it's nice and secured. So sort of scoot back through the, so I can take that. Got some pins in the back I can get rid of. Excellent. Well, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And you get some time for some stitching. Don't forget, don't do too much housework. We don't like doing housework around this place. We'd rather stitch. But if you have to, be efficient, be strong, be focused, get it done, be finished, and get back stitching. That's the motto for housework this weekend. Get in, get it done, make a list, tick it off, and move on. Get back stitching. How are we going for time? Oh, we got time. No rush. I might do a little bit of housework. I don't know. Such a decision, isn't it? <laughs> I can feel a pin there. Something's nipping at me. Oh, you sneaky, sneaky. He's underneath all that. Good one. I can get him. But there he is. You nasty little guy. There you go. Got him. I feel like I could feel something jab me. You pin all these layers and then you just get straight into stitching and you realise that there's a pin buried in amongst it all. Very efficient that I am. I can feel one behind here. He could probably... Come out. I 
shall say goodbye at the end of this little section. Got plenty of homework. Thanks, guys. That'll give me something to play with this weekend. nice to get those buttons stitched on too that connect to the first piece because I've been sitting in that little bowl for nearly six months and I've been very nervous that they would go missing and even Honey Bear got one on her dress I thought gee I'm gonna come to connect to summer and they are not gonna be there I need to just jiggle that piece over there's another pin just need that to come over a fraction more. Neaten that edge up. There we go. It's a little bit tight on that iris, so I need it to just peek up a little bit. So that iris is not crowded there when we go to stitch it. Yeah, that's good. There we go. Oh gosh, it's like a splash of colour, isn't it? Okay, everyone, I'm going to leave you. I better go and do something more constructive than just sitting and stitching. <laughs> like go and mop the floor. Love it, love it, love it. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.